there's a war on for your mind. It all started early on the morning of February 12th, 2008. I was getting ready to go to bed and thought I'd check my emails first. When I checked them out, I discovered one from the Ron Paul campaign saying, Dr. Paul gives another update about the campaign in his latest video message to supporters. Watch the video by going to YouTube. So I thought, what the heck, let's go check it out. When I went to the YouTube page, I started watching the Dr. Paul video, and while I was doing that, I was looking at his statistics. Now, I've got many videos up on there, so I've watched statistics for over a year now. And that's when I began to see that something wasn't quite right here. I began to smell a rat. I mean, look at this. It had been rated by 1,596 people, 1,245 left comments, favorited 652 times, and the number of views was only 213. How is that possible? The answer is it's not. I thought, well, let's give YouTube a little break here. Give them a chance to straighten things out. So I went to bed and got up eight hours later. And eight hours later, the numbers had gone up. It had been rated by 4,229 people, 3,446 left comments, favorited 1,798 times, but the number of views was still only 213. Sixteen hours later, I went back and checked it out, and Ron Paul's video had gone up again. 6,326 ratings. 6,163 comments, favored it 2,763 times, and the number of views was still locked in at 213. What's wrong with this picture? So I thought, well, let's go check out the most viewed pages on the political part. John McCain's video had 384 ratings, 201 comments, favored it 199 times, and only had 3,678 views. Hillary Clinton's video was also on the front page of the News and Politics. With 127 ratings, comments were blocked, of course, and the views were only 3,280. Now, Ron Paul had more comments than that, yet he was not on the front page. Was Ron Paul's video being kept off the front page? Well, 37 hours later, I went back and checked it out again, and the numbers had jumped up. Ratings, 8,580. 10,851 people left comments, favored it 3,583 times, and the number of views was up to 301,452. Suddenly, it had a huge jump. How could that have happened, YouTube? Unless you did it on purpose. I mean, look at this. The views suddenly jumped from 213 to 301,452. There was only one reason this could happen, and that YouTube wanted to keep Ron Paul's video off the front page. I thought, well, I wonder if they've got it on there now. And, oh, look, suddenly he's number two on the most viewed page of all people looking at all the videos that day. Only a pretty girl beat him on that one. Uh, and when it came to news and politics, most viewed today page, Ron Paul was number one. Yes, folks, they had blocked the number of views and kept him off the front page of YouTube. Why? That was the big question. Why would they do something like this? And I realized, you know what, you've never really looked at the Ron Paul video. So I said, let's go check it out. And it's when I looked at the video, I realized why they were blocking it. And you will too. Watch this. I have to be very positive about what we have achieved in this year. Far beyond all my expectations and far beyond the expectations of most of those individuals in the media who wrote us off rather quickly. One reason why we shouldn't write this campaign off is we haven't had a convention and surprises do occur and with Romney dropping out all of a sudden things change. So we don't know what will happen. There may be a lot of information on the other two candidates that will come out that will alter this uh, election completely and totally. If we have to stay in this race and do what we can, adjust on a daily basis, but it will require new supporters and new enthusiasm and new funds coming in because it is a major task and it's not like we're just running a small little race. We're running a race to save the country, to change the direction of the country, to preserve our constitution, to change our foreign policy. So it is an overwhelming task. So therefore, I am delighted that so many of you has, have stood by and continue to work and they would like to charge that we are not patriotic, that we're not American and that the troops don't support us. But isn't it unbelievably beneficial for us to realize now that our funds exceed all the other candidates that come from the active military duty.
duty people. We get more money from active military people than all the other candidates, all the Democrats and all the Republicans, which tell us that we're on the right track. We're supporting the troops because we support the Constitution. How can we expect our troops to go and risk their lives defending the Constitution and then go to war under UN resolutions? So this is a powerful message. It's intertwined with our finances because we're spending nearly a trillion dollars a year overseas to finance this world empire. Our responsibility is to bring the Republican Party in this country back to its conservative roots, believe in the Constitution, and believe the Constitution is so vital. If we do that, this country can reverse its course. If we don't, the middle class is going to be wiped out, we're going to have runaway inflation, and this war will be endless. And one of the projects I have been working on in my mind and in my head that I want to share with you, because I think we're at this point where we have to do something major. We know the shortcomings of dealing with the major media. Yes, I think we've had a decent shake because we at least got into the debates. They could have prevented it. We didn't get the even amount of time. And of course, we never got a fair amount of time on the evening network. But we still had enough time for people to look us up and go to the internet and actually kick off the campaign. But there's another thing that I think we ought to do. We ought to make a grand display. We ought to have a true march to show what our numbers are. And this is risky. Just as it was rather risky for us to put right on our website as the dollars were coming in, because if the dollars had not come in, we would have had to do what those other candidates did when they pretended they were going to have a money bomb and they had to remove it rather quickly. But we didn't because you fulfilled, you know, the requirement and the, and the dedication. The money came in and it became exciting and a game and the media noticed it. But a march on Washington could do the same thing. It could be very, very valuable. It could send a powerful message where the media can't ignore us. So I, I'm at a point where I think we have to make a grand stand. We have to stand firm and see where the numbers are and be counted and see if the remnant is there and see how big it is. We can never count the remnant, but we can certainly energize those who have been identified already. So for me, I'm sort of getting excited about this because I have talked with others and they say this is a great idea. And there's been so much good music associated with this campaign. There's no reason in the world why we can't do as well as some others have done in Washington. But we're at the crossroads. If we don't turn it around soon, I kept thinking at the beginning of this campaign we weren't ready and that's was why I was reluctant. But then when I got involved, I found out there were many more than, than I ever dreamed of. So now we're at a point and I have been convinced that it is more crucial. But we have to realize exactly where we stand uh, in this particular campaign and at the convention. But it doesn't mean that our voices won't be heard. And if we do this right, and if we really have a grand rally and a grand march, and then there are question marks left with our, uh, our nominees or potential nominees uh, in September for the, uh, for the convention, then they will know that we can't be ignored. And I am hearing this daily from other members of Congress and around the country, but I happen to believe it can work and has to work. So if we want to really take a stand for freedom, take a stand that nobody can ignore, to see what would happen if we really had this grand march on Washington. And this would have to be done rather soon. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, in six months or a year. I'm talking about rather soon, three or four months before the convention. So hopefully we can put this all together and hopefully I can get the enthusiasm from all of you just as you have given enthusiastic support for this campaign already both in the volunteer work as well as the funds raising in so once again I want to thank you very much for tuning in and paying attention and listening to this update that there's no reason in the world that we should back off this is a time to march forward thank you for listening <laughs>